Hi, friends. We got another brush video family introducing the core extension from BK Beauty. Thank you to Lisa and the BK Beauty team for sending these brushes. I was pleasantly surprised to receive them and to learn that we got new nine to be exact, new designs for the core line extension. The core line are the original brushes that were released with the BK Beauty brand. And now we have nine additional brushes, specifically five face brushes and four eye brushes to be added to the core collection. These are sold on bkbeauty.com and at the moment only sold as bundles. So you can either get all nine brushes, all four eye brushes or all five brushes lisa had said that in early next year hopefully bk beauty will release these individually and i would highly recommend that you check out lisa's video two videos one that she presents the nine new brushes their functions the thought process behind them and on the second video lisa takes us through her makeup routine using all nine with different products sharing the different ways you can use them i definitely had to come on here and talk about these because you know i love to talk about my brush I'll compare them to some designs in the original line as well as other natural hair brushes if you needed some context. But let me start with what I think will be the favorite among the bunch. The 109 Mini Contoured Foundation Brush. The itty bitty baby to the beloved 101 Foundation Brush. And bigger than the Angie Hot and Flashy Concealer Brush. So now we have three brushes in the angle design. But what's exciting about the 109. I think it's it's more versatile design, right? You can see here next to the 101 is much smaller in the brush head and not as dense. There's a lot more fluidity here on the application. And Lisa had mentioned that if you usually use the 101 brush to push in a creamier, more tighter types of foundation textures into your skin, the 109 is suitable for those lighter weight foundation complexion products like let's say the NAS or the House Labs Skin Tech Foundation. Here I did use the Hourglass Ambient Foundation with the 109. And what I like about this brush is because it's not as dense, it moves across the skin a lot more than the 101. The 101 brush I use to push in foundation and it definitely yields more coverage because it's a lot more dense. It's not going to soak up as much product and all these brushes are synthetic. So that is the advantage you have over a natural bristle brush where it's not porous because it is a synthetic fiber. It won't take away product. So you will have that product on your skin. You could use less because again, the brush won't take away as much. And I do, like the fact that the 109 is not as dense as the 101 and I can use this brush in a circular fashion when buffing in my foundation and that I cannot do with the 101. It's a lot larger, tougher to maneuver around my brows and between my nose, which is fine if you have a larger face and the 101 is perfect to really work that foundation in and get it on quickly. But because of the 101 smaller size, I could use the edge of the brush to apply foundation here between my brows, around the contours of my nose, under my lip, down the jaw. And just to see, I also use this brush to apply the LYS concealer. A little big for under eye concealing, but if I, you know, didn't have another brush, I'm happy to use this. I have to be careful in blending under my lash line because it is rather big to get here under the lower part of my eye. I probably will use a different concealer brush, but again, if this was the only one I had, I could just use the brush for the larger portion under my eye and just use my finger for the lower inner part. I did go in with the Danessa Skin Blurring Balm in number seven as a bronzer. I do like the slanted edge for cream bronzer application as it fits nicely here into the hollows of the cheeks. And for that reason, I can use that pouncing motion that I use with the 101 for foundation application to then apply a cream bronzer here on the hollows of the cheeks and also to pounce cream blush here on the apples of my cheeks. So this brush is highly versatile and I find myself probably reaching for this more often than I would the 101. Again, considering how larger the 101 is, that I think the size limits 
its use and how many tasks you can have this for, but 109, I mean, again, foundation, concealer, maybe, cream bronzer, cream blush. If you even want it, you could kind of just tap down some highlighter on the cheekbones. Why not? Compared to Sonia's Jumbo Base, Jumbo Base has a lot more bristle. It's still bigger than 109, but smaller than the 101. So this is why I find the Jumbo Base a little more versatile than the 101 still. But I like the density in the Jumbo Base for, again, that more heavy duty foundation complexion product to really work into the skin. I actually like to do the paint down method with this type of a brush. And because this has more bristle, one that I wouldn't usually go swirl and twirl with, but with the 109, I do swirl and twirl slide down as well, but because of the smaller size and the fact that it doesn't have as many bristles, I have a little more options in my application technique. Oh, and I forgot to mention, my apologies before starting this whole thing, the brush handles are a little shorter than the original core line, right? So that's something to look forward to. Lisa had mentioned that one of the main pieces of feedback she had received for the BK Beauty brushes is that they wish the handles were shorter so you get a little closer to your face. So although not completely travel size handle length, these are a little shorter than the original BK Beauty brush handle, yeah? So that's something you could look forward to. Okay, back to the video, we got it. Next up, we have the 110 Large Concealer Brush. Lisa had described this brush to be like a beauty sponge on, <laughs> on a stick. Compare to the 108 brush. So you see 108, a lot more fluffy, longer bristled, has a taper, not as dense as the 110, right? So the 108, I think more suitable for powder application a lot more wispy and feel, the 110 a lot more dense, right? And here I applied the LYS concealer and because of its tapered shape, it fit nicely under my eyes, more tight than the 109. I also applied foundation with this brush. Now, what I like about the tapered shape on the 110 is it allows me to apply foundation in a circular fashion, which I have been favoring as of late. I like the push-in method, but I feel when you apply it circularly, lowly, you just get a nicer buff finish on the skin. And because of this brush's size and its perfect density, applying foundation with the 110 in that manner, I adore. I did that with the Hourglass and I also applied the House Labs in the same fashion, but I also picked up the finishing powder from the Hourglass Lighting Edit Palette here. Because of the denser texture, it picks up the baked powders a little bit more. So if you want a heartier serving of that powder under your eyes, if you felt like it was too lightweight with let's say a, a squirrel brush or even a brush with not as many bristles, this brush will pounce on more powder, but the nature of the powder from the Hourglass palette is so lightweight that it won't look heavy under the eyes. So although it is labeled to be a large concealer brush, I love this for foundation. If you want a more precise brush for your foundation application, especially if you want to apply a little more coverage on regions of your face and not necessarily want to apply all over, you can get more precise with that application as well as possibly use this for cream bronzer as well. You can whip it here into the hollows of your cheeks, whip some cream blush onto your cheeks. You're probably wondering if I would ever use these with powder. Probably not. Nothing against synthetic fibers. I just found from my experience that using a natural bristle, the blend is a lot smoother and you don't run the risk of the synthetic fibers possibly moving your foundation. Sometimes if it's too dense, I feel to apply a powder is not gonna have the same fluidity. So I mainly use these brushes with cream products, but I do use some with powders. It just depends on the application technique, which leads me to go into the 
113. 113 small flat powder. This I really love for several tasks, namely applying my LYS concealer in the same fashion that I did with the 110. I pounced it under my skin. Just keep in mind, this is not as dense as the 110. So it will take away a little more product than the 110. 110, I think more suitable for those creamier textures that you just need a denser brush with to move the product. Whereas the 113, for more fluid textured uh, concealers, you can tap, you could just move. But what I primarily love this for, well, well, two tasks. I love this for foundation application. I know it's strange, especially now that we have the 109, to have a flat brush with this taper it feels so satisfying to paint your foundation and albeit a smaller brush is going to take a little bit more time i get that i find this method of applying foundation just works it beautifully into the skin and also gets a little more precise on those regions that you want more coverage really nice to pull down between the brows and around the brows again because of this pointed tip around the nose if you wanted to brush a little bit of cream contour or bronzer here alongside your nose you can under your lip down the jaw fantastic for those cream product tasks but what i love this also with is the house labs biotech highlighter i applied the shade peach quartz on my cheekbones and this brush picked up the gel to powder texture beautifully i just tapped it on my skin and it left behind lovely coverage without overwhelming my skin because sometimes this region could look a little textured with my with my fine hairs okay i think in combination of the powder formula and the brush a great pairing to leave behind the perfect amount of highlight with that glass skin finish. I believe I also used the 113 to apply some powder under the eyes. I think it might have been the hourglass powder still, but because this is not as dense as the 110, you could probably use this with a loose powder or a pressed powder, not so much a baked one. But in addition to the highlighter, I used the 113 to tap into iridescent coral from the lighting edit palette and pounce a little bit of that powder onto my cheeks. And it was the perfect amount of luminosity it didn't take away the cream blush I previously applied and it was uh, again um, the right amount of dose of shine but it didn't look textured on my cheeks and I like the fact that I could just pounce on instead of having to apply in a circular fashion that could possibly move the blush that I have underneath just pouncing that texture on worked beautifully and also because of the smaller brush head size you can be more precise in your powder application maybe you wanted to lightly carve here under the hollows of your cheeks or just pinpoint powder application on areas that get a little oily without you having to use a bigger brush and overwhelm the skin with powder 111 dense bronzer this was exciting you know I love my bronzer brushes. Lisa had mentioned that this was between two here, 107 and 103. So these are from the original core collection and we have now the dense bronzer between them, right? So the 107 brush is a little smaller, a little more movement here, dense bronzer, a little shorter, and also has more of a taper, meaning the taper starts a little lower lower than the 107 and compared to the 103 103 much larger and definitely has a lot more movement it's great for a bronzer if you want it that more enveloped sun-kissed look from your powder bronzer but the dense bronzer will be a little more precise and here I use my NARS Laguna cream bronzer which was satisfying to apply because I think maybe more approachable to a beginner or makeup novice who needs to apply cream bronzer in the same way they do a powder bronzer, right? And you can do that with this brush. You just lightly pick some up and kind of pounce it on in a similar way that maybe you would a powder bronzer. But what's great is that it's not too dense, but not too fluid either. So it's right there in the middle. I personally like to pounce in the cream bronzer and use a different bronzer brush instead. So this is Sonia's Jumbo Bronzer. It's similar in size. I would say the dense bronzer is like a mini version 
of the jumbo bronzer but i would use this with powder because there's a lot more fluid on the skin whereas dense bronzer i think better for pouncing on getting that color into the hulls of the cheeks but leaving behind nice color and nice blend behind dare i say if you want it you could probably use this for foundation maybe more fluid you know just to kind of lightly paint that color on the center of your face, not it overwhelming your skin, but just presenting a little bit of makeup, you know, just also why not? You could take some cream blush on the cheeks and just whip it on in the same fashion you did the cream bronzer. All options are yours. 112, the final brush in the five piece face lineup in this extension. I really like this brush for several things. I used it here with the LYS Higher Standard Satin Matte Cream Blush in Self Love. Fantastic for cream blush application. And this formula, marvelous particularly because it has nice emolliency but great pigmentation. The 112 whipped that self love blush on effortlessly. I enjoy the fact the brush picked up the cream beautifully from the pan, didn't leave behind any streaky finish. You could pounce it on like this or apply it in the circular fashion. You could also apply your cream bronzer with this brush. Now it's not going to be as dense as the 111. This is a lot more wispy. Okay, got a lot more movement, not as many bristles, so you won't get that same impact. And this actually reminded me of the Angie Hot and Flashy 507. Similar slant, but the 507 is much larger, a lot more bristle here, so it's, it's more direct in that way, whereas the 112, more wispy and a little more precise, and that's why Lisa wanted to name it the small angled brush and not necessarily a small blush brush, even though intuitively you might think that's what it's for. It can be used for several tasks on your skin, and what I did after all products have been applied, I use this to finish my makeup. So I tapped in the lighting edit palette again and just whipped around the finishing powders on regions that I needed a little more buffing. And because it's not dense, it moves across the skin well without picking up product, without interrupting the blend and really great to get around the face quickly, but great for pinpoint finishing if you need a finale smoothing. Now we're moving in to the four eye brushes. I started with the 209 mini shader and this is a versatile brush. I actually was surprised because when I first saw it, I thought inner corner, lower lash line application. This actually applied a, a huge portion of my eye makeup. So let me start off with the fact that I use the ABH Rose Metals palette. I first use the mini shader to apply it heavenly on the inner corners of my eye. And heavenly is, I wouldn't say a gritty texture. It's definitely the sparkly reflective shadow in the palette, but the 209 picked it up perfectly and laid it down beautifully on the inner corner so you could see that shine. Didn't have issues on the pickup, didn't have issues on the application. You'll see eyeshadow on my lid because I use other brushes, but I wanted to go over the other tasks I used the 209 for. I also applied Rose Fire on the lid. Now, because it is a smaller brush, it's not going to whip on your lid shade as quickly as another brush like let's say the 203 right much larger than the 209 but I like the 209 because it has great pickup and great slide as well so you could carve in under your crease to apply your standout lid shade I also tapped on a little bit of dune on the outer lid so if you wanted to increase the intensity of your shadow you can use the mini shader to pick up that deeper color and just lightly tap here on the outer part of your lid to create that contrast and also applying color on the lower lash line if you wanted to sweep that blend. In this case, I applied Noble on my outer quarter lash line to create a little bit intensity there. Really smooth on the application and not super stiff like this brush here. Where did it go? The 204. 204, a lot stiffer, shorter, right? So this is going to be tighter, closer to the lash line. Maybe your smudger. This is great if you want a little bit bit of more of a serving of eyeshadow here on the outer portion of your lower lash line. You could take it all the way through as well, but this is great to get more color here to create that shadow bracket around the eyes. Now we can move on to the 210. 
the mini pencil. Different from the 207, which is rounder, bigger, more of a dome top, the mini pencil is a more precise point. This was great to apply shadow on my lash line. If you wanted a more robust serving of that shadow wing, I would say, sure, maybe use a smaller brush if you wanted that shadow application to appear more precise. But the 210 is nice to get more of like that whipped look of shadow. You could also use it to blend out out your coal liner which will be fantastic because it is a little bigger and with the precise point will blend out that coal liner faster and when I applied noble with the 209 on my outer lower lash line I took 210 to sweep ashes all the way through so although it's a small brush I still think a great size to blend any other color here under your lower lash line but still keep it tight and not blend too far down next we have the 211 detail blender now I'm I'm sure you're thinking about a lot of different blending brushes in the BK Beauty line. So we got the 203 from the original line, but from the Angie Hot and Flashy lineup, you have a few blending brushes that appear similar. So we have the 504, which is smaller than the 211, and then you have the 502, a still a little bigger than the 211. And then you have the 203, which is more tapered, and you have more of a dome here with a taper also, but you see how the taper starts lower here on this brush. And then you have the different shaders from the Angie Hot and Flashy lineup. This, I think, has really nice movement, is great for smaller eyes, especially if you wanted to apply that crease color, but it not travel too close to your brow. You have a lot more control there. With synthetic brushes and eyeshadow, I like to hold the brush lower on the handle because the ends are blunt cut and they're not kept as is like natural hair brushes, specifically those made in Japan, you have the tendency of possibly moving your eye skin. So make sure you don't apply too much pressure and you just allow the brush to slide across the skin and that will enable a smooth blend and it not look muddy, especially when you start to add different colors. I took ashes through the crease and then I placed Dune on the outer lid. Because these mattes from the rose metal palettes are very soft, the brush picked up the texture quite easily and I thought it fairly effortless to blend through the crease. And lastly, we have the 212, which I think is the brush Lisa had designed to be between the 202 and the 201. So here is the 201, longer bristled, more flat top. This is like your finisher blender, right? It's a lot bigger. If you have bigger eyes, sure, that could apply your crease color. If you have smaller eyes, this might be your finisher to take it across the edges. And then the 202 is your more precise pinpoint brush smaller it's going to get right into the crease without any disruption on the higher part of your crease right so if you want that precise color placement here at that point it's going to place it right where that crease lies and you could also tap the brush with another color here on the outer lid but with the 212 that comes in between those shapes right you got a little bit of that dome from this brush and you got a little more precision from the 202. So that is the cross between and what you find in the 212. What I use the 212 for is to apply sun rose on everything. So on the outer edges of, I think it was ashes I applied first with the 211. And this could be your first laid down color brush. If you have my eye size a little bigger, you can use the 212 to whip that shade through your crease. If you have a smaller eye, then the 211 will be more precise in getting color in your crease and it not traveling toward your brow. And this is the eye look that I created using the new core extension eye brushes and the complexion from the new core extension face brushes. I have to say it was fantastic using them. And as I mentioned before, I probably would use these mostly with cream products because when it comes to synthetic fibers, you can wash them more often, especially if you are a professional and you find yourself washing your brushes with a higher frequency than one who are only using brushes on themselves versus a natural hair brush, which recommended that you wash once a month, but if you're using them more on one face once a month, then it's gonna have more wear than a synthetic fiber brush would. Now, I know many of you were bouncing between the refer release and this release, so G release with the Beautylish uh, gift card event that just wrapped. I think it all depends on your budget. 
the type of makeup products that you have and what you're comfortable using. Again, I have a bias toward natural hair brushes. I adore Japanese made brushes. I just feel they are in on a different tier. That doesn't mean these are not going to deliver as well. I do feel that everyone's makeup routine has room for BK Beauty brushes or synthetic brushes, but these are thoughtfully made. I think Lisa did an incredible job in thinking about the holes that exist in her collection, what shapes can serve her customer base more, where they would have all their needs met and those needs being met effortlessly and in a way that has them enjoy their makeup application. When it comes to eyeshadow and pigments, like for instance, Celestial Divinity and those heavier duty colorful mattes, I will probably use these brushes and not my undyed Sokoho goat hair because those are a pain to clean. Applying the foundation, now with the 109, 110, there are a lot more options here and happy that Lisa created a smaller version of the 101. I think it just makes it more versatile in terms of the application techniques and different mediums you can use with that brush. Now with these designs, the core collection pretty solid and if you were looking towards buying a few and not necessarily the bundles just keep a lookout for the new year where BK Beauty will have these individually so no worries if you want to get these eventually but not the bundles you have an opportunity to do so in the new year let me know fam what you have your eye on from all these brush releases if you have BK Beauty what you've used from them what you have your eye on from the core extension again and thank you to Lisa and BK Beauty for their generous gift and for allowing me the opportunity to share these brushes on my channel. I'll see you down in those comments. And until then, that is a wrap. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up or maybe consider subscribing to my channel. And until then, I will see you on here again with another review tutorial or a brush video. Take care and I will see you again soon.